The ANC in Parliament said yesterday that it would be meeting with its MP, Mervyn Dirks, following a letter which Dirks wrote to the Standing Committee on Public Accounts, that's SCOPA, in Parliament. Now, in this letter, Dirks, who's also a member of SCOPA, requested that committee chairperson, Nkulekum Tlengwa, calls the president to appear before SCOPA. This in the wake of a leaked audio clip of what is reported to be ANC President Cyril Ramaphosa saying that he was aware of public funds that were used for party political campaigning at its 2017 Nasrec elective conference. To help us unpack what these developments could mean for Ramaphosa, political commentator Oliver Dixon joins us. Oliver, great to have you. Thanks so much for talking to us. Thank you for having me again, Leanne. All right, so uh, an ANC MP basically wants Scopa to call Ramaphosa to respond to questions regarding a leaked tape where he is heard about uh, saying that uh, he's prepared to fall on his sword instead of the public finding out how state monies were actually used for campaigns uh, because the image of the ANC is what he is most concerned about. I mean, that's just to, to, to paraphrase what was said in this audio recording that, uh, that, that, that came about last year. W what does this say about state capture and the ANC? Um, it means that, and when I first heard this audio, I saw nothing came of it, so I just sort of assumed uh, that it hasn't been authenticated um, as truly being an audio from um, an ANC uh, meeting. Uh, but when I first heard it, and I thought, if any of this is true, because the president makes some very glaring admissions there, such as um, we know comrades who have paid uh, for votes, we know comrades who have used uh, public uh, state funds to fund and pay for votes within the ANC elective conference. Um, if any of that is true, if he truly does know thereof, right, then it means that he was dishonest before the Zondo Commission. Um, that, doesn't, that doesn't just mean he's a man without integrity. It means he may have potentially perjured himself uh, before the Zondo Commission, where he spoke in vague platitudes, waxing lyrical, about the ANC's renewal project and how the ANC changed how it conducts electoral processes internally um, to be able to, uh, you know, build integrity into the process. Uh, but uh, that sort of speaking into the future, you have to account for the past. And he failed to do that when those questions were being put to him. Uh, but more importantly, it means that then the president himself is in violation of the law and the constitution by not disclosing what is clearly blatant corruption, mm -hmm. having known about it, that's against the law. Um, and not only is it in violation of the law, it's also a violation of Parliament's uh, executive ethics code, right? And so this is something that the public protector could even investigate. If any of what is said in that audio is true, and if it's been authenticated as having truly been the president speaking in that meeting, um, then a, a real and serious action must be taken from it. Yeah, it is, it is very concerning. And I think, you know, listening to that and listening to the president of your country uttering these words is a, is a great worry. But now I want to take this, this whole issue and juxtapose it with Ramaphosa's letter on Zondo's report. Now, he goes on to say that it paints a disturbing picture of how key institutions of our democracy were compromised and undermined with criminal intent, where significant amounts of, of money were stolen. I mean, are, are these words of his actually legitimate concern and congruent with what was said in the leaked audio clip? Look, um, that's, I think we should be treating these as firstly as separate issues, right? Uh, the president had to have said something about the Zonda Commission report, although asking uh, the court in December up an, an extension on when he should be able to table this report before parliament, giving an opinion and a plan as to what will be done. It now seems that the president has done is done reading the report and clearly has uh, a sentiment about the report. Um, we, we now need to move away from sentiment and ask him for a plan on what will be done. Uh, state capture was a very special project, uh, and it wasn't just about the stealing of funds. And if you read the first report by the Zondo Commission, it was about a deliberate and systematic and systemic attempt at weakening these institutions first as a means of being able to loot and, 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 and empty out and hollow out these institutions, right? And so you can't just speak about the stealing of money. Um, you need to speak about the systemic, uh, uh, bureaucratic, 
uh, weakening that happened in these institutions and the role his party played, right? And then if you link it back to that particular audio, you then have to ask yourself, um, is there real political will to be able to fix this? Mm -hmm. One, we must also just remind ourselves that Cyril Ramaphosa is not new uh, to the administration of what is deemed the years of state capture. He was very much right there at the center of it. His response to the Zonda Commission and when uh, Deputy Chief, uh, Acting Chief Justice Sonor put the question to him, why didn't you act or say something? He said, well, I sort of had to play my cards, right? To be able to ensure that they re remain in the system so that I can later fix the system, right? Uh, it's now time for that sort of fixing. But I can tell you now, President Ramaphosa has run out of ideas on how to deal with state capture. The NPA is not nearly capacitated enough to be able to deal uh, with the depth uh, of uh, the rot that has been brought on the state. And if the president doesn't uh, give us a clear plan on how he will capacitate the NPA beyond its current capacity, um, then, uh, you know, this is all just lip service. Now, you know, the question that really needs to, to, to be answered is, you know, what would happen in a normal functioning state where a state president has supposedly admitted in his party's private meeting that state monies have been stolen and used by members of his party. I mean, what what should happen? You know, we, we, we think of the British as being overly dramatic for calling for Boris Johnson to resign simply because he may or may not have been to a party in the middle of a lockdown um, in Downing Street, right? Uh, but that's what accountability looks like. It, often looks over, uh, overly dramatic um, and maybe it is time that what would what what should happens in other societies what we call functioning democracies with accountability embedded into the dna of that democracy that we call as the people not just for heads to roll but perhaps even for the president to step down for him to take real accountability by stepping down that's what a normal society looks like uh, and that's when accountability works right but in south africa we've grown so despondent um at the lack of integrity um and at the sheer and blatant corruption by politicians um that the ramaphosa clip happened and we sort of were like yeah let's deal with omicron um and sort of moved on but again uh we're not quite sure if it has been authenticated yet as truly having been that right and um again when the when news publications such as the independent ask those sorts of questions uh, we were yet to receive answers from the party about whether or not and the presidency about whether or not that clip is authentic and he indeed said that in that meeting yeah so we do know i'm and unfortunately we're needing to just uh, start wrapping this up because we, we've got to do a crossing uh, in uh, one of our reporters standing by now but just in terms of uh, the, the way forward on something like this obviously this now has come from an anc mp that scopa look into this and um obviously the M the, the anc uh, having meetings behind the scenes of, of what we've been told, trying to get him to remove the request to have an inquiry into it or sc Scopa have a look into this. But I mean, what does this mean where the ANC is asking the ANC to probe its own president? Is this the way things should be done? Or is this again just showing us the lines and the factions that are within the ruling party? It shows the lines and the factions on the one end, but it also shows that Ramaphosa has an ANC parliamentary caucus that may not all the way be drinking his Kool-Aid. An ANC uh, a caucus that uh, may well hold him accountable uh, and may well vote against him in a, no, in, a vote to, in a motion of no confidence. And that's an important piece of information uh, because the president is to face a motion of no confidence, um, uh, and, you know, enacted by uh, the ATM African Transformation Movement, uh, whose president, Vuyele Tuzungula, won a case against parliament in uh, the Supreme Court of Appeal uh, just in December last year, specifically about a motion of no confidence and the secret ballot uh, against the president of the country. That will be the first order of business as soon as Parliament opens after the State of the Nation address, right? Um, and so the question then is, if it is to happen under secret ballot, will every ANC MP believe that keeping Ramaphosa uh, in the presidency seat is the best decision for the party, the country, um, as well as uh, the executive? And the answer may well be no. 
uh, we saw in the last motion of no confidence under secret ballot that there was a considerable amount of ANC MPs who, with the benefit of a secret ballot, voted against Jacob Zuma. That number might just be significantly more this time around, given the discontent that has grown not just in the party, but also in Parliament in particular. And we must also be clear that it's very likely to be the case, given that this is an elective conference year for the mm. ANC, um, and that you will see those uh, party factional lines uh, a lot more visible. Um, and I do think that the support of Ramaphosa in the party uh, has seeped through the crevices of the ANC's factional line, battle lines. All right. We'll have to leave it there. But uh, this is certainly not the end of the story, but just giving us a little bit of insight into this developing story. We'll see what happens with a political commentator, Oliver Dixon, talking to us about uh, political issues of concern in the ANC at the moment. And of course, uh, that uh, that request from an ANC MP that uh, it's going to, of course, want Scopa to, to, to take a look at that audio recording where the president is allegedly heard saying that he would rather fall on his sword than reveal who was funding the political parties.